Hi everyone, this is Learning with Linda, and today I bring the topic of Snap Food Stamps Max benefits for the month of January. As of right now, we have 35 states that have been approved, and as always, I bring you that payout date information. In this video, we'll also be talking about the SNAP emergency allotments for the month of December, given that some states are a couple or one month behind, I should say. And we'll also be talking about the IRS. The IRS is actually sending two important letters this month, so you want to make sure that you receive this information. And finally, we'll be discussing rent relief that is still available in certain states. So make sure you stay until the end of this video to ensure that you receive this information. Now, before we get started, if you are interested in the latest news regarding stimulus, child tax credit, SNAP, PEBT, and everything in between, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. Now let's get right to it. And don't forget to take advantage of these offers. You can get $30 in cash back once you use Rakuten and you spend $30 or more using the referral link that is in the video description. With this application, Rakuten, you can also receive up to 20% cash back every time you shop at your favorite stores. And you can't forget about the Ibotta app where you can get cash back when doing your grocery shopping. You can also receive $10 once you've signed up uploaded your first receipt using the referral code that is on this screen. And for those of you that want to maximize your rewards, use a second app like Fetch Rewards to upload the same receipt you just uploaded to the Ibotta app. Fetch is actually super easy to use as it will give you points for any type of receipt. You'll get additional points just for signing up with this referral code. And finally, don't forget that you can shop for your groceries on Amazon using your EBT card or your PEBT card. The good news is that it is completely free. No membership is required. And you can also receive Amazon Prime discounts for EBT recipients and students. All of these links will be in the video description. So let's begin this video with the two important letters that the IRS is sending this month. Here are the latest details. Americans who receive the third round of stimulus checks or an advanced child tax credit payment should be on the lookout for two important letters from the Internal Revenue Service. So families that received monthly installments of the booster child tax credit last year will receive a letter called Letter 6419 from the IRS informing them of the total amount of the advance payment they received and the number of qualified children used to calculate the payments. There's going to be a second letter that the IRS will be sending, and this one's called letter 6475. This one involves a third stimulus, uh, the third stimulus check worth up to $1,400 that the government delivered in the month of March last year. The letter will reflect how much that individual was paid and can help people determine whether they are entitled to it and should claim it um, when it comes to the recovery rebate credit on their tax returns when they file in this year in 2022. Now remember guys, this only applies to the third stimulus payment that was issued last year in the month of March. Now let's go into the details of letter 6419. This involves the child tax credit. So recipients should keep the letter and use it to accurately reconcile the credit they already received when filing their taxes this year. Now people who receive the monthly payments can also check the amount of their payments by using the CTC update portal. Now if families opted out of the monthly payments, those of you who chose to not to receive those advanced monthly payments, they can claim the full amount of the child tax credit on their 2021 federal tax return. This also applies to families who don't normally need to file a tax return. Now, for low and middle income parents who are eligible to receive $3,000 for every child between the ages of 6 to 17, and then you can also receive $3,600 for every child under age of 6 under the expanded child tax credit. So remember guys, letter 6419 can also be used to claim the child tax credit that you did qualify for, but you didn't receive. Some people were reporting that they didn't receive their last payment in the month of December. Others reported that they only received two months of it, um, but they didn't receive the other half. So through this letter, you're going to be able to claim the remaining amount that you're entitled to through the child tax credit. Now let's move on to the details for letter 6475 that you'll be receiving, you'll be receiving through the IRS. This one involves a third stimulus check.
So most eligible people may have already received the $1,400 payments from the American Rescue Plan. The explanatory letter is going to walk you through the process telling you how much stimulus money you received, including any plus up payments and any extra dollars still owed to you. However, people who are missing the third stimulus payments should review the information to determine their eligibility and whether they need to claim a recovery rebate credit for tax year 2021. Your 2021 recovery rebate credit will reduce any tax you owe for 2021 or be included in your tax refund. So if you receive the full amount of the third economic impact payment, you don't need to include any information about your payment when you file your 2021 tax return. Once again, this is specifically to those who plan to, uh, to, plan, who plan to request this third stimulus check. Now moving on to the SNAP emergency allotments for the month of January. As of right now, we have 35 states that have been approved and as always, I bring you that payout date information. Now keep in mind guys that there's a couple of states that are no longer providing these SNAP emergency allotments and those states are Nevada, Missouri, Florida, Idaho, Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, and the state of Arkansas. Also, keep in mind that the dates I'm about to provide you with are directly from the USDA website. If you don't receive your payment by the payment date, I can only recommend for you to contact your local SNAP office. So let's begin with the first state on this list, which is Alabama, issuing payment on February 1st, Alaska, January 3rd through January 31st, Arizona from the 1st through the 14th of this month, Colorado from the 9th through the 14th of this month, Delaware, January 26th, DZ is on a regular issuance schedule. Next, we have on this list also the state of Georgia. Georgia will be depositing payments between January 27th all the way through the 31st. Hawaii, February 1st. Illinois, January 22nd through the 29th. Indiana will be depositing their payment only on the odd days between January 5th all the way through the 23rd. Iowa, January 1st through January 10th. Now moving on to the state of Kansas, Kansas will be depositing payment between February 15th all the way through the 24th, Kentucky January 2nd through January 19th, Louisiana January 8th, January 15th, January 22nd or January 29th, Maine January 7th, Maryland from the 1st through the 31st of this month, Michigan January 22nd through the 31st, New Hampshire January 3rd, January 21st, February 3rd or February 18th. Now for my friends in the state of New Jersey, uh, your deposit payment date is from the 1st through the 5th of January. New Mexico from the 1st through the 1st, from the 1st through the 31st of January. North Carolina from the 22nd through the 31st of this month. And Ohio deposit date is also on January 24th. Now moving on to the state of Oklahoma, January 10th through the 15th or from the 15th all the way through the 31st. Oregon will be depositing three rounds, same as usual, J round one, January 10th, round two, January 28th, and round three on February 1st. Pennsylvania from the 15th through the 29th of January. Uh, next, we have Rhode Island depositing payment on January 3rd. South Carolina from the 1st through the 19th of this month. Texas from the 3rd through the 7th of January. Utah, January 30th, Vermont, February 11th, Virginia, January 16th, Washington will be depositing payment from the 1st through the 20th of this month, and we also have West Virginia on this list depositing payment on January 5th. Next, we have Wisconsin depositing payment on January 22nd, Wyoming will be depositing payment based on the first letter of your last name, so A through D. January 2nd, E through K, January 3rd, L through R, January 4th, and S through Z, January 5th. Now, there's still a couple more states that were waiting on the information for the SNAP emergency allotments, including the state of California and the state of New York. If any information comes out, I'll make sure to let you know as soon as it is available. Now moving on to the SNAP emergency allotments for the month of December. Remember guys, there's only a couple of states that are issuing one month behind. So let's start off with the state of California depositing payment on January 16th, Hawaii January 12th, Kansas from the 15th through the 24th of January, 
Massachusetts starting January 5th, Minnesota January 11th through the 28th, and finally we have Vermont issuing payment on January 15th. Now let's move on to the topic of rent relief. Unfortunately guys, it is ending in certain states, so here I bring you the latest information. Rent relief for Americans who were struggling financially was a centerpiece of the financial stimulus that Congress made available in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nearly two years later, funds have exhausted and some states have closed the application process. As CNBC reported, some states have closed or stopped accepting applications for rent assistance as federal funds have been exhausted. For example, that includes the state of New Jersey, which stopped applications in the month of December. Washington, D.C. is no longer accepting new applications. Texas stopped applications in the month of December. And Oregon stopped applications in the month of December as well. Now, there is one specific state that decided to stop accepting the rental applications uh, for rent relief pretty early, right? That deadline was November 15th, and we're talking about here the state of New York. Now, it seems like four tenants and the Legal Aid Society sued the state of New York for closing these applications early. So here I bring you the additional details. State Supreme Court Judge Lynn Kotler issued a preliminary injunction ordering the state to reopen its application portal for rent relief within three business days, even though there are no new funds to back up the program. While well, New York has already distributed billions in federal funds to cover rent for struggling residents, the state could be eligible for additional money in the coming months. Holcho and state lawmakers have called on Washington to approve another $1 billion in rental aid. Treasury officials alerted the state that only $27 million has so far been approved in additional funds. A spokesperson for the Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance said the court ruling was being reviewed. So if you're in the state of New York, highly recommend for you to get your application in. There may not be additional funds as of right now, but hopefully Congress does approve additional funding for many states, right? As there's still people being affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And that is all the updates that I have for today. Remember to turn on your notification button to know when I have uploaded a new video. See you next time.